Hi everyone, I'm Daniela Brossler and this is Unordinary Made Ordinary, where we discuss the extraordinary experiences of everyday people. If you would like to continue the discussion on topics such as metaphysical, paranormal, or supernatural after listening to this interview, feel free to find our private UMO Facebook group and we'll put a link in the video description below. Today, I'm really excited to find out all about Aaron Green and his stories. And I'm so happy that you could be here with me today, Aaron. Yeah, it's uh, nice to be on here. I'm glad to finally uh, get to talk to you. Yeah, I'm glad too. I know we weren't doing interviews for a little while, but we're back. Yeah, excellent. So um, let's uh, let's hear a little bit about you and what you're about, your background. Sure. Uh, so my name is Aaron Green. I, I live in Chesapeake, Virginia. Uh, I, uh, I'm married with three kids and a dog. Uh, I have a degree in electrical engineering and I, I work as a professional engineer uh, at Newport News Shipbuilding. I work on um, uh, projects for the U.S. Navy for submarines and aircraft carriers. And uh, uh, I guess that's me in a nutshell. So, yeah, you're a smart science guy. <laughs> right, right. I, I'm a science kind of guy, an engineer. Yeah. Nice. Um, so let's hear, what was your childhood like? All right. Uh, so, uh, I was born in Durham, North Carolina. And when I was two, my parents moved to Chesapeake, Virginia. Uh, and you know, I had a, a an older brother who was about two and a half years older than me. And, uh, you know, we lived a, a pretty normal suburban life. I had lots of, you know, friends in the neighborhood, uh, that, that we would hang out from, from time to time. Um, I feel like, uh, Everything was pretty normal and routine as, as far as uh, a typical kid in suburbia, as far as that goes. Were they, um, did you, were you raised religious at all? Uh, so we went to a Catholic church when I was growing up. Um, and, you know, I, I, I don't know if I ever really considered myself a Catholic, but I do consider myself a Christian. So as a kid, even though you were going to Catholic church, you, you didn't really... Uh, well, I, I always felt more like uh, Christianity, uh, independent of any denomination, was more uh, what I was about. Um, don't um, Catholics and Christians basically believe a similar similar thing, or no? Yeah, yeah, they do. It's it's very similar in my in my opinion. It's very similar. What what's important uh, it, to me? It's it's about the same for all the Christian denominations. Um, you know, I, I consider myself someone who tries to follow the teachings of Jesus, and I, I don't want to be put in someone else's box about, you know, what, what their viewpoints are, are, are fine for them, but, you know, I have my own ideas and thoughts, and, and uh, you know, I'd rather speak for myself as opposed to say my, my religion uh, dictates how I view things. Yeah, and you're still now to this day, you're aligned with Christianity. Uh I consider myself a follower of, of Jesus. I guess that's a better way to put it. Okay. Yeah, a lot um, of people like to delineate between being religious and being spiritual or, yeah. you know what I mean? Like they, they define themselves and that's fine. I think that's great. Right, I, I can appreciate that. Uh, you know, I think that would probably fit for me too, more, more spiritual and uh, I feel like religion is kind of, you're following someone else's ideas. Uh, whereas I think people should should, try to figure out things for themselves and, and maybe not follow an organized religion so much, but, you know, everybody's at their own point in, in this discovery. And so what works for me might not work for somebody else. So uh, back to your childhood. <laughs> yeah. uh, what else would you say? Like, I know you had an experience that actually happened while you were young. Right. Uh, so one day, uh, shortly before my sixth birthday, I was playing in a, uh, a friend's backyard. Uh, there was probably me, my brother, and maybe five or six other kids, you know, just, just doing normal kid things. And uh, I'm not quite sure exactly what happened, but somehow I developed a, a, a difficulty breathing. Like, like I, I couldn't breathe no matter what I did. Um, and, I, you know, I, I was in distress and I was getting increasingly upset and frustrated and, and, and I just, I couldn't breathe no matter what I tried to do. Uh, so I started walking away from, from my friends, uh, trying to go home, I guess. And um, I'm not sure what happened, but, but somehow this breathing difficulty 
triggered a, a release, I guess. And um, as I was walking away, my consciousness came out of my body. And as I was there, uh, you know, above my body, I, I watched my body fall to the ground. And I was, you know, I was basically just floating there above my body, um, you know, trying to figure out what was going on. And, and the, the experience initially was a lot like waking up from a dream, only the dream is, is this life, you know, this reality. And I was waking up into uh, a, a greater reality. Uh, you know, with each passing moment, I was more uh, alert and intelligent uh, and, you know, overall, uh, existing like that outside of the body was a lot better than being inside the body. You know, I, I looked, I looked down at my body that I'd lived in for six years and, you know, honestly, I was kind of relieved to be out of it. You know, it was, uh, it was easier to be outside than inside. And, uh, I, I really didn't miss it at all or, you oh know, God. miss being in the body at all. Uh, I looked, I looked back at my friends and, um, you know, everything, all of a sudden, everything that was going on seemed completely trivial, but like, uh, you know, what, what these kids in the neighborhood were doing was just completely unimportant to me. Um, uh, you know, it, it was, uh, it was a, a completely different reality than, than what we're used to on a day-to-day -day life. Um, but I could still see everything that was going on. I, I would describe it as like I was in a, a, a parallel plane of existence that, that that's like a spiritual plane that's parallel to to our physical plane of existence and and that's where I was and so uh you know I was just kind of floating there above my body and, and my first question was um you know what am I and I, I guess I, I looked at myself and I, and I saw myself as a like a round orb of consciousness with a a, a faint but noticeable light coming from from myself and, you know, I, at that point, I didn't have any kind of uh, shape other than, than a, a, a roundish orb. And how, how did you see yourself? Like, is uh, it like when you look down at your own body and you can see your body? Like, right. Yeah. I, I don't know how I was able to, to, to look at myself, but I was able to, I, I wondered, you know, I was curious about myself and I, I wanted to know, you know, what am I? Yeah. And I, I saw myself as, as a round orb with um a, a faint light coming coming from within and, and you know there there was more complexity to to what i was than around or but i i didn't understand it and i i, I certainly couldn't couldn't explain it now so did you fell then to the ground and your friends you were away from your friends did they right. notice that you had fallen right uh so, so nobody noticed me right away um they kept doing what, what they were doing and you know my body's just laying there and my consciousness is above floating and um you know after after that thought what am i then i then i thought uh you know where did i come from you know what where, where did i start and so uh i i, I guess what i would say is a, a spiritual memory came back to me and it was like um i was reliving this experience that I had previously had, not, not rel reliving, but re-experiencing it, because this was, you know, something that had happened prior to my life. And so uh, I, I, I re-experienced something that I, I had spiritually experienced a long time ago. And so it was as if I was back there reliving, re-experiencing it. And so um, I, I was back in a, uh, what I would, you know, it's kind of difficult to describe, but I would call it like a, a, a sea of souls. It, it was me and hundreds or maybe thousands of other souls were all in a very uh, bright, golden, uh, like, like a sea almost of, of souls. We were all, all there together. Um, we were uh, happy. You know, we were content. There was no problems. And, and not only were there no problems, like there, there never could be a problem. Like there's just nothing could ever go wrong in that where we were. Uh, we were all uh, happy, content, and uh, you know it, it was a a bright yellowish light that we were all in, um, and you know it, it was it was terrific, and everyone was happy. But we were, um, I don't know, simplistic, I guess. 
I, I'm not sure how to describe it. We, we were like baby souls is, is I guess what, what I would, what I would say. And um, periodically uh, something would come to us, uh, uh, some kind of uh, something that we all enjoyed. Like, like as a kid, when I was trying to figure out what had happened, I, I thought of it like a cookie. You know, there was something that came down and there was one for everybody and we all enjoyed it. And, and, you know, that, that was good. But then one time, these cookies, I'll call them, there was one fewer cookie than there were souls in this group. And I made the conscious decision, you know, that everyone else wanted one of these cookies. Uh, I made the conscious decision that I was going to forgo one so that everyone else around me could have one. And then, you know, when every last soul other than me got one of these, uh, these treats, uh, I was very, very gently removed from this, this group of souls with, with the utmost care, you know, it's hard to describe, but I was very gently lifted up out of this, this group and um, a, a higher level consciousness communicated with me, you know, not through words, it was like direct mind to mind communication. And um, b basically told me that, that, you know, that, that they were God and um, that, that what I had done was terrific. You know, that, was, that it was a great thing to, to give up something so that those around me could, could you know, have what they wanted. Um, and I was, was told that, you know, I was very much loved and, um, uh, you, you know, and, and this, this greater intelligence that, that was communicating with me was loving, kind, you know, very, very powerful and knowledgeable. And um, basically, I, I was told that, um, that you, I, I was told that, that um, a wonderful existence had been prepared for all of us, but that we weren't, we weren't ready to uh, appreciate or, or enjoy that existence, that we were, we were too immature. We weren't, uh, you know, we weren't prepared for it. We weren't ready. And that, uh, you know, that what I'll call God, God had prepared um, a, a journey for us or a way of uh, bringing us to the, the point where we could appreciate everything that had been uh, prepared and planned out for our existence. That, you know, we, we weren't in the state we were at, we couldn't appreciate everything that, that was planned, but, but there was a way of preparing us so that we could appreciate all this. And so I, you know, I was kind of like, okay, you know, I guess that sounds good. Um, you know, I, I, I was coming from a, a place of complete ignorance, but this loving entity was, was very clear uh, and very confident that the, the plan that, that, it, that God had w was wonderful and it was a good plan and the, it was going to work. And uh, I don't want to, yeah. I don't want to get you off track at all, but yeah. in this memory, do you remember what the, what the God looked like? Yes. Yeah. I'm going to talk about that. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. No, no problem. And also, also, also when you were uh, all in the sea, right? You said it was like right. a sea. Was it all like orbs, like separate orbs that were touching? Yes. Yeah, we were all, uh, as a kid, it reminded me of a ball pit. Okay. Oh, a ball pit. You know, where kids play, and there's yeah. a whole bunch of balls. It was, it was kind of like that, but, you know, each ball would be a, an individual soul. Like a light. Yeah. And, and all of it together was like a glowing light. Um, okay. So, uh, so, so, you know, God basically asked me if, if I was uh, okay with, with going on this journey. And, and I said, uh, okay, sure. Um, I guess it, it sounds all right. And, you know, I was told it would be extremely difficult, but very, very brief. Um, and, and you got to understand, and, and this is very difficult to explain, but there's like a timelessness to being in this spiritual condition. Uh, you know, here in our everyday lives, we're so confined to time and it's very sequential and it's very concrete. You know, we can't really do anything about it. But in this other frame of existence, it, it was timeless is, is the only way I could describe it, I guess. Like, like time didn't apply the same way that it applies to us here and now. Um, and so the, the, how short this experience that God had prepared for us, how short it seemed from that perspective is, is kind of hard to, to describe, but it seemed very, very, very brief. Um, but, but I asked 
I asked God, basically, couldn't you just change me, you know, make me so that I could appreciate all this stuff? Like, like what, you know, why do I need to experience anything? Couldn't you just change me? And God basically said, um, yeah, absolutely. God could do that. But uh, we were created uh, to have free will. And it was very important to God that we can make our own decisions and we're, that we're not just, uh, you know, mindless puppets, you, you know, and, and that if God changed us to make us prepared for all this uh, without, uh, I guess, doing it the, the, the harder way, that it would uh, interfere with our free will and it would be a, some, some sort of fundamental problem. Uh, and so God wasn't, wasn't going to change us. We were going to change ourselves, essentially, through our, through our own actions and our own free will. And, and so, you know, I, I agreed to all this. And then, so, so then God basically said to me, uh, would you like to see my face? And I said, okay, sure. Uh, that seems good. Um, and God said, okay, this, this is a, uh, uh, this is an honor to, to be able to see my face. And I said, okay. And so I was, I was very gently, my, my focus or attention was very gently turned and I saw what I would describe as a, a, a humongous sun-like entity, like, like picture a sun. And, but in this sun, there was millions and millions and millions of souls, kind of like the, the sea I had just come from, but these were like uh, more advanced souls, you know, souls that had gone through the process and had, uh, achieved whatever they had ne needed to achieve. And then now they were, they were back with, with God and they could appreciate, um, you know, God on a, on a deeper level They they had, they had reached the point where they, they, I don't know, they were, they were mature enough to enjoy uh, what uh, God had in store for them. And some of these, most of these millions of souls didn't really pay attention to me, but some of them did, you know, they recognized that I was a new soul starting out. And so they came to the surface of the sun-like en entity and I could see their faces. So, so I've made a, a picture that kind of shows what I saw and Please, please remember, I, I'm an engineer. I'm not a graphic designer. I have the artistic ability of a carrot. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm not an artistic person, but I've done my best to try to, to show what I, what I saw. Um, so let me do a, a screen share. Yeah, let's see this. Um, I try to draw a lot of things that I see too, and it's, I feel like I never do it justice. Right. Okay, can, can you see this? Uh, it should be yellowish. Yeah. All right. So, and let me describe this if I can. Okay. So, you you know, some of these, some of these souls came to the surface to basically to wish me well, because they knew I was about to go on this journey. And they told me that they were just like me and that eventually when I was ready, I would join them. And, uh, you know, they were all extremely happy. I couldn't possibly describe how happy they were. Um, but they, they totally understood what I was going to, about to go through and uh you know they, they wished me well and they couldn't wait for me to join them because when i joined them i would add something to to their happiness the the more souls who, who join them that basically that the happier they are um so you know th th this is my my attempt to to draw what i was shown um <laughs> All right, so That's let me, interesting. Let me, let me so do you think that this great, um, you said it was like a big sun. Yeah. I've heard of us all coming from something called like, I think they call it the great white sun or. Okay. I've, I've heard of that before as well. Okay. Yeah. I've, I've never heard that before, but that. Oh, really? Yeah. This, you know, this is, this is what I, this is what I was shown. Interesting. Um, so, and so anyway, so then uh, God asked me if I was ready, and I said, you know, yes, I'm, I'm ready. God said, are you sure? And I, I said, yes, yes, I'm sure. I'm, I'm ready to, to go on this uh, difficult but very brief uh, journey. And so in a flash, I, I was off, uh, I, I guess, to this physical reality, and um, I was shown uh, – 
a multitude of, of different places I could go, different physical experiences I could have. And <clears throat> I, I, as I understand it now, these must have been different different planets I could go to, I guess. Um, you know, it was entirely my choice which one to go to. And there, there was after seeing hundreds or thousands, eventually I, I saw Earth. And for whatever reason, it, it appealed to me. And I said, yes, that, this is where I want to go. And you picked the hard okay. one. <laughs> uh, yeah, apparently so. I don't know. Uh, but it, it wasn't important which one of these places I went to because they all had the same uh, net, re net result, which is where, you know, you, you get the education you need and then you go back back to uh, back to God, I guess. Um, and, and I picked the earth, uh, you know, for whatever reason, this is I was sure this is where I wanted to go. Um, you know, I, I, I viewed it as like a, uh, a boot camp or a kindergarten. You know, it was, it was very difficult, but brief, and you, you get your education quickly. And, and by getting all this difficulty out of the way quickly, you can then enjoy your existence at, at, a, at a higher level, you know, <clears throat> kind of like pulling off a bandage. You, you get the bad stuff done quickly, I guess. And so then, uh, you know, that memory ended, and I was back to, to floating up above my body, you know. And, and all this took, time, you know, time does, isn't. Time doesn't equate from what we talked about to, to this uh, this other reality, but it, it was like uh, almost instantaneous. And um, you know, then I, I thought, uh, okay, well, why am I why am I Aaron? You know, what why am I living this life? Like like how did I like why this life? And so th then the same thing happened. The, the memory replayed that I'd previously previously experienced, where. I, I re-experienced what I had gone through to become Aaron. And so uh, I was with some guides who, who were helping me, uh, you know, start this, this physical life. And, uh, you know, the, the guides had uh, a, a person selected that I was going to become. And this person was extremely angry and uh, like, like their entire life would be ruled by anger. And I just, I flat rejected it. I said, no, I, I'm not going to do this. You, I, I knew that some soul would eventually take this life and that it would be beneficial for them, but it was just not the right life for me. And they said, okay. And so they went to uh, a, a different set of parents. I saw these parents and, um, you, you know, we, me and the guides, we started to look at, you know, what, what was possible from these parents? What, what kind of children could they have? And we, we looked at all the different options and uh, I wanted to be a girl because um, I felt like girls were, le were less prone to violence and I really didn't want to hurt anybody. That was, that was very important to me. And, um, you know, I saw the girls available to, to, to this couple and uh, they could have a redheaded child. And, and I, and I was, you know, I, I somehow intuitively understood that being a redheaded child was, was rare but it was something that appealed to me, having a hair color that was unusual. And, and I was, uh, you know, I was immediately aware that in some parts of the world, having red hair was looked down upon. And it, it kind of saddened me that, that, you know, people were still so primitive as to look down on somebody based on the, the color of their hair. But I still, I still liked it and, and wanted to be a redheaded girl. But the, what was available to these parents for a redheaded girl, um, there just wasn't enough options, you know, they were limited based on the, uh, I guess, the, the genes that were available to them. And so if, if I chose one of those options, somehow my personality and that, those genes, it, it just didn't quite work out right. I, I would never end up getting married. I, you know, I, I would have difficulty with, with relationships. And so it, it, you know, overall, it didn't, it didn't seem to work for what I was looking for. So then we start looking at the genes available for, uh, for a boy or you know a brown and, and I, I want it to be a redhead still but the genes just weren't there and and but there was a, a ton of options for for brown haired boys and so i started to look at those options and um so I, I initially i thought okay i want to be extremely good looking i want to be like one of the best looking people on the planet and that that was my choice i easily could have done that but i was shown the downside of that you know if i had been really really good looking I would have become too promiscuous or too promiscuous for, for 
wherever I was in my development. And um, that would have had a, a negative uh, spiritual uh, side to it. And, and so I said, okay, you know, that, that's not, that's not going to work for me and, and my development. And so I, I scaled down the attractiveness to, you know, a, a little attractive, but nothing, nothing extraordinary. Now I know at 47, I'm not, you know, I'm not, not that good looking, but you know, when I was younger, I, I think uh, my attractiveness matched uh, what, what I, I had picked, you know, when I was picking this body is, you know, attractive, but nothing, nothing extraordinary at all. And then I, I started looking at the intelligence of this, this person I was going to become. And I wanted to be like the smartest person on the planet, you know, extremely intelligent. But I was shown that I would be extremely arrogant and that I would be, become an atheist and that I wouldn't uh, depend on, other, on anyone else. And I would kind of look down on everybody because they weren't as smart as me. And I saw that that was, you know, that was a big problem to, uh, to have that kind of view. And so, you know, just like with looks, I, I backed down uh, the intelligence that, that I was going to have to intelligent, but but nothing nothing extraordinary. You know, a smart person, but but nothing that you know stands out. And and when I arrived at the level of intelligence that I thought would work for the experience I was looking for, I said, okay, you know that that looks good. And uh, you, you know, it's safe to say I got a, and no one was forcing any of this. This was all my choice. And um. You know, it's, it's safe to say I, I knew exactly what I was getting into with this body down to the most intimate detail. You know, I knew and, and you know, no one was forcing this. I, I, I picked this body and I, I was shown that as a consequence of these genes that I had picked and this wasn't planned, but as, a, as like a side effect, I would have terrible acne as a teenager, which I did, you know, like the worst, the worst one percent in the school kind of thing. And. Um, I also saw that it would only last a couple of years, and from that perspective, it, it's hard to it's hard to appreciate how short a year looks from a timeless spiritual perspective. It looks really short, and so to me, it was like it was so short, and somehow it would help me on my, uh, you know, help me with my development or help me on my mission. So I said, okay, you know, that that's fine. It's not a problem. Um, and once once this body was picked that, that I wanted to to have, um, the, the guide showed me a couple of things that were planned for my life. Uh, one was uh, that I would have my nose broken as a teenager, and sure enough, you know, later I did have my nose broken, and then I would have a shoulder injury that I, I dislocated my shoulder when I was uh, I think 19, and um, I had to agree to that. Like, like these things wouldn't happen to me unless I agreed to them. And then I also saw that I would break, I would dislocate and break my other shoulder, which happened when I was in, when I was about a 35, I guess. And um, I needed to agree to all those things for the, in order for them to happen, but, but they were necessary uh, for my development. Like somehow they, they would help me d develop uh, spiritually the way I needed to develop. And, um, you know, I was shown that they would be able to fix my shoulder, but, but the uh, the technology available seemed so primitive from that point of view. It seemed like you know, like almost like I was going into the dark ages. Um, but I was shown that they could fix my shoulder, which they did, and I agreed to all this. And um, you know, when I agreed to th this body and and some of the basic uh, problems I would face in life, uh, they they these guides once again showed me the whole life, this whole life like you know, the basic outline for what it would look like and asked me if I was sure that I was willing to do this. You know, they, they were not forcing me at all. I had to agree to this and I agreed to it. I said, you know, yes, I agree. Um, and, and, you know, after they asked me if I was sure one time, then, then that was it, the decision was made. And so then uh, that, that memory ended and I was back to being uh, outside my body, you know, floating there as a, as a, as a soul. And I was, you know, kind of a, you know, with, with each passing moment, I was more and more, more and more aware of what was going on, more intelligent. Uh, I understood the situation better. All these memories were coming back to me. And I also remembered as a, as a soul that when this life was over, I was going to be able to go back home. And I was so happy about that. You know, I could go back and see what I called friends which I, I'm not sure who that was exactly, but 
you know, it was just wonderful to realize that I'd be going back home. And um, I, I, I had this, this further question, you know, well, you know, what happens to souls after they, uh, after they're done with their life? And so I was shown, uh, I, I was shown some, some, some pretty bad things. I, I was shown one place where um, some souls were, uh, th these were people who had previously lived on earth and they were fighting with each other. You know, they, they no one was, was forcing them to do anything. They were freely fighting with each other and they, they appeared like, uh, uh, I don't know, ugly monsters, I guess I would say. And they were just fighting with each other. When they would, when one of them, when one of them would injure the other, they would quickly heal, but they just kept fighting over and over again and, and injuring each other horribly. And, and they were all miserable and filled with hatred and just, it was just terrible. But they were no longer, they weren't living anymore. They were. That, that's right. That's right. Yeah. They, they had lived their life and they were, they were done and they were existing in this, this horrible place fighting with each other. Um, but one of these, one of these uh, souls or, or people, whatever you want to call them, they stopped fighting. And, and when they stopped fighting, there was uh, what I could only call angels or, or being of light above this whole group of, of, of souls that were fighting. Um, this angel swooped down and pulled this soul out of this horrible fight. And, and I was told that, you know, all of them, when they were done fighting, they would be removed and that God had a way for them to continue with their progression, like, like that, that no one would be left in this horrible place forever. And then I was shown an, another a, a place of darkness where um, a bunch of former people, you know, now souls without their body were just, uh, you know, they were just, they were in a place of darkness and they weren't, they weren't really miserable, but they weren't, they weren't happy and they, they were just confused. They weren't sure what to do. And there was a lot of, uh, th there were souls from some higher place, much happier souls that were trying to help them. But they, these uh, confused souls in this dark place were, um, they were mistrustful and they were hesitant to, to make any kind of change or do anything. But eventually one of these confused souls agreed to go with, with one of these higher level souls or, or angels or whatever they were and uh you know they would be able to continue their their progression i guess like like they they could move on they weren't no one was stuck in this place forever for all of them they would eventually have the ability to 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 move somewhere else and uh i, I was shown a, a place that uh a, a whole lot of happy souls were living it was it was just like a life on earth except it was much happier there was there were souls living like that and then i saw some souls living in what I would describe as a, as a city of light. Like, uh, I, I, you know, I'm not sure what to describe. It's like if you picture a, a, a city where all the buildings and, and people are like made of light, that, that's what it looked like. And they were, they were extremely happy. Uh, and then I saw another place where the souls were essentially uh, flying around each other and they were, they, they were so happy that they could barely contain it. Um, you know, these were these were different levels that that different people were at, or that you know, I guess when when you get out of life, depending on your level of development where you are, that totally affects you know where you where you are after after life. But there was, as far as I could tell, there was all sorts of different levels. You know, there's not there's kind of a view that there's a heaven and a hell, but what what I saw was that there's almost an infinite number of levels. And, and and a soul, you know, they fit into their level based on, um, as far as I can understand it, how loving they were, how compassionate they were, you know, how how much of these godlike characteristics they've developed for themselves, and that and that a minority of people who who really hate others and and want to kill or torture others that that well, if you want to kill and torture people, you have free will, you can do that, but. You're going to be with other people, other souls who are just like you, and you're going to be murdering, murdering and killing each other for as long as you want, and it's going to be horrible because that's just that's just awful. Um, but but you know that that's kind of what it, the takeaway I, I I had from that was that uh, you know 
your free will, you, you do what you want to do. And if you want to do horrible things, well, you can continue to do horrible things, but you, you're not going to enjoy it. But if you want to do loving, nice, kind things, you know, that, that's where the happiness really is for, for people who, who've developed that kind of uh, characteristic. Any, anyway, um, after that memory ended, I was back to floating over my body. And then um, a being of light, I guess I, I would describe it. I don't know if you want to say angel or someone who had lived previously. I'm not even, you know, I'm not even sure. But, but so, something came at me at great speed, you know, very quickly and said, you know, communicated to me, not verbally, but uh, mentally, you are not to leave your body. Like, like I had done something wrong. And as I understand it now, th this breathing problem I had should not have been bad enough that my soul left my body. And I was kind of like being rebuked. And, you know, almost immediately I was back in my body. Uh, I was breathing fine. I was very confused. And I, I walked home. And, and at, at the time I finally got up, you know, after my body had been laying there, I, I imagine about 30 seconds had gone by. I'm not sure. My brother had, had finally noticed me laying there and started walking towards me. But as soon as I, I stood up, you know, he, he went back to, to play with the friends. And so I went home and tried to explain it to my mom. But uh, I, I was not able to explain this as, as a almost six year old. It was just too much to, to try to explain. Um, well, even back uh, back then, I think that there wasn't the language really for right. what happened to you either. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, and, and I had a, a pretty bad speech uh, impediment as a kid. I, like I couldn't say a lot. There's a lot of uh, consonants and vowels I couldn't say right. So I, I had difficulty speaking anyway. And and just the nature of the experience, I, I just didn't have the verbal ability to, to communicate what had happened to me. Um, but I would think about the, the stuff I had seen like daily, you know, I, I was trying to figure it out, trying to understand it. And after several months had gone by, uh, the, uh, the guides basically communicated with me mentally. I didn't, I didn't see anything, but I immediately recognized who this was. This was the same guide I had worked with uh, to, to get my life planned out. And the guide basically communicated with me, uh, hey, we need to block these memories that you have you, you know this experience you had was not I, I don't know it, it was not what was planned out it's interfering with your ability to live a normal life it needs to be hidden from you oh, um, wow. but you will you will get it back when you're an older person um, but they, they couldn't just hide it from me they needed my agreement but I, I agreed I, I didn't understand I, I kind of asked why and they explained that um, I could never develop faith because I had this knowledge, you know, like knowing this stuff interfered with me from having faith. I guess I, I asked for an explanation, but I couldn't really understand the explanation, but it, but it was very clear that uh, they told me faith was important. So I said, oh, okay. And so that this memory was hidden from me. And then, you know, this, this was when I was, you know, six years old, basically. And, uh, you know, I just, I lived my life. Uh, you know, I met, met my uh, girlfriend, now wife, but, you know, we had kids. And then about 10 years ago, um, I was reading a, uh, a, a and, you know, I, I had my nose broken, but didn't have any, any idea that I had agreed to that. I broke, you know, dislocated my shoulder and broke the other shoulder and had no idea I had agreed to any of that stuff. Um, and about 10 years ago, I was reading a Newsweek article about, um, even Alexander, I don't know if you've heard of him, but he, he yeah. had a near-death experience. He's, he's the neurosurgeon who, uh, who basically showed that he had brain activity, or he had uh, this spiritual experience, even though he was brain dead. Uh, anyway, I read his article. I believe Julie interviewed him, oh, okay. and if she did, maybe we'll throw the link um, uh, under in the video description as well, okay. so anyone else can review that if, if, if she's already talked to him. I feel like she did, but... Okay. My memory. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so anyway, I, I I read I read this article, and I thought to myself, "Wow, this is this is pretty amazing." Um, you know, I guess I guess all this stuff is real. You know, this is this is this is cool. You know, there's something about his experience that, for me, triggered acceptance of God at, at, at a, I guess a deeper level. Um, you know, without any 
of memory of, of what it experienced and something about accepting his story about what his, his his experience it triggered something and it allowed my memories to come back to me and so all this stuff that i experienced as a kid all these memories returned to me and um you know it, it I, I could appreciate them on a deeper level having the, the adult perspective and, and understanding of the world that i do now i could i could understand some of the stuff i had seen as a kid on a, on a different level and so I was able to uh, slowly understand what I had been through, and I, I, you know, I looked at other people's near-death experience accounts and read read what they had been through, and I came to understand uh, or reach, you know, my understanding of what had happened to me. And so, you know, I, I just hope to share my experience and add it to the the millions of other people who have had the experience like mine, um, and and hopefully let people know that hey this stuff about god it's, it's real and you know I, I don't have a perfect understanding of, of any of this and neither does anybody else but the underlying fact is that hey god is real and and you know this life is short and eventually we're gonna we're gonna get back to that that spiritual reality um so you don't have any idea how long you were you were out of your body when you were floating above and you were Right. Seeing all these I would, memories. Right. I would guess it was about 30 seconds. Oh my God. But it sounds like you got so, so much information in 30 seconds right. that it was like, I don't know, much longer. Right. Well, you know, 30 seconds here and, and 30 seconds spiritual, it's just somehow it doesn't, it doesn't equal out. It, it, it's, it's just different. So when you talked about um, how you were kind of getting excited about going back home, to your friends was that were you excited about getting back into the sea of people or did you think you might be going into the sun with the other people i actually thought i was going to be in this uh city of light like that's that's where i thought i would, would was going to be going okay um you know I, i'm not sure why but that that's where i i thought i was going um so the other thing is is that you came directly as a young soul into this current life this is your first well i don't know I, I don't know uh something happened between when i picked earth and where i am now but i don't you know i don't have a full understanding of everything that that has happened um be between picking earth and and becoming aaron oh so maybe your memories are were condensed so maybe you remember picking earth but you don't remember maybe if there were more times that you came down right i i uh you know i, I don't have anything to say about that um <laughs> I, that, that's not something that i questioned spiritually I, I i just questioned where i came from initially and then why aaron and so what anything that happened between them at those time times I, I couldn't really say so the answers that you got were definitely related to the questions you asked yes right. okay and and if you had the, the the forethought you could have asked more questions or different right. questions right. and worded it differently and gotten more answers absolutely Since yeah you were uh, given so much information though i mean that's a lot yeah you know it's like uh spiritually we're all connected to a spiritual internet i don't know what you call it but we're connected to this deeper intelligence and we can all draw from it. Um, and that, I guess that's what I was doing. And, and I was, you know, spiritually, it was easy to get that information, but I, I didn't get answers to questions I didn't ask. Do you think that because you're a, a science um, based person that hearing the story from another scientist helped you in some way accept it more? Um, it might have. Uh, I think I just uh, had never really spent the time hearing about uh, that kind of story before. Like I, oh, I okay. uh, you know, I, I had grown up uh, reading Bible stories and, and being taught that kind of uh, perspective on, on God, um, but I had never really given any serious consideration to, to near death experience. It was, uh, it was just something I hadn't given proper uh, thought to. 
Well, you have come back from that experience with pretty good idea of what happens in the afterlife, but did you, do you have any feelings about reincarnation, whether that happens? Uh, I, I guess I, I don't have a good answer for you, I'm afraid. Because you weren't given, you didn't ask that, and so you don't right. have the answer. Right. Okay, and you don't have an opinion on it either. You just are going to go with, you know, your memories and... Uh, yeah, I'm just going to uh, talk about what I experienced, and, and I, I know there, there's lots of debate, and I'm just going to uh, avoid that debate right now. Yeah, well, uh, some of the debate is about whether it's any of its free will, which you have stated more than once that every part of it was. Uh, what, yeah, did I, you I ever would... have any injuries that you didn't remember you uh, that you signed up for, like? Um. nothing significant um like uh as i remember it i had um i had been show, shown the second shoulder injury and that i could basically live a, a a full life after that without any uh significant injury that had been planned now of course i can i could go do something stupid and get myself hurt but um from from that perspective it, it seemed like i didn't have anything else planned for my life so i'm hoping that's true and i don't have so to go if you decided to take up parachuting or <laughs> right. tightrope walking you could possibly have the idea that well <laughs> i should not get injured again <laughs> uh no i'm not i'm not looking to test fate uh or you know? <laughs> take unnecessary risks I, I have no doubt i can still get myself hurt oh okay <laughs> but i i think if i just try to live a from from my experience it seems like if i try to just be reasonable I'm, I, I'm not going to experience anything else like that. What if somebody okay. hears your story and it triggers their memories? <laughs> well, that would be cool. I, uh, you know, I, it, you know, I started researching near-death experiences after I, I remembered mine, and one of the one of the most shocking things for me was that there's millions of people who have had this kind of experience, like literally hundreds of millions. If you start looking at the looking at the numbers it's pretty significant like it's it's not uh it's not all that unordinary at all like this is oh. actually pretty common for people that have this kind of experience yeah and you know that 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 really amazes me and and you know if, if someone didn't like my experience or for whatever reason they couldn't connect to it there's millions of other people saying the same stuff i am and and i think, I think uh, hearing everybody's various experiences is important because you know you can't maybe you shouldn't cherry pick which ones <laughs> right you know what i mean like take it all in and learn oh, yeah. learn what you can i think yeah that, that's how i view it i view it as like every experience is like a, a pixel on a tv and the more you have the, the better view of the afterlife and, and god you're going to get so by the time that you had your memory and uh you're saying that was 10 years ago um by then you're married with kids and stuff yeah and yep. so did it did having those memories change in any of your beliefs at all, like religious wise or anything? Um, well, it, it made some, some things seem much more certain for me. Like, uh, I, I, I have no, no question that God exists. Like that's just a, a total certainty for me. Um, and then it, it definitely, uh, changes my perspective on what's important and what's not important. Uh, you know, from my perspective, what's important is how we treat each other, you know, love and, and all of its manifestations, you know, kindness, honesty, decency, uh, acts of service, you know, everything we can do to help other people. Like, I, to me, I think those are extremely important, whereas religious uh, dogma and, um, you know, traditional uh, tradition, that, that, that's not important to me. But, uh, you know, just, just loving your neighbor, I, I think that's what's uh important based on what what my experience showed me so there might be rules about that are religious rules that are maybe right. less important than but you know i think some of the like the commandments right what is i don't know i can't think of them off the top of my head but i think they are basically about treating each other right. fairly well you know <laughs> yeah if you look at it uh like like do not kill i don't know don't don't steal that kind of thing don't you imagine every religion has some I, some sort of, you know, whether it's Buddhism or, you know, Muslim, I'm sure they all have some sort of like guidelines to live a, right. a nice, 
decent life, you know, with each other. Yeah, there's a there's like a, a variant of the golden rule that every religion has. I, I, I saw some meme or something where it laid out like each one basically, uh, you know, don't do to others what you wouldn't want done to yourself, uh, that kind of thing. Yeah. And then every religion has a variation of that. And I, to me, that is what is, is most important is just just trying to be good to other people. Did um did remembering all these memories um, affect or change relationships with your family? Um, a, a little, I guess. It, I think it made me a better person. You know, I I, I strive to. Uh, you know, I, I guess I, I got my life sorted out a little better. Um, my priorities have shifted, and um, I, I think I'm a better person, and that I uh, treat people better than I did. Not that I was that horrible. <laughs> you know, my wife, I beg to differ, but. Um, <laughs> You know, I, I think I'm a better person, and uh, I think uh, that has been helpful to, to the people around me, you know, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I think you're very lucky that you got to have this much memories, like, you know, because we are born um, with, like, what they call the veil of right forgetfulness or whatever. We don't, we don't get to we don't get to live with the, those memories of pre-birth memories right. and things like that. So you're actually very lucky that you got to, to get them back even. Yeah, I, that's how I view it. And, you know, I, I hope to just share my, my experience with all the other experiences to try to uh, give people a, a, hopefully a fuller picture of, of, you know, what's going on here. You didn't. Um, and so you didn't, some NDEs, they uh they get some abilities after having having it like some clairvoyance or right. any anything like that and you haven't experienced anything like that uh no i i don't think so i i think i'm i i don't think i have any special abilities or anything like that all right um i think you said you were going to be writing a book right you haven't started yet i'm well, I, no, I've I've started it, but it, it's still a work in progress. Okay, and um, you also said the best way that you'd like to be contacted is through uh, Facebook. That somebody can search right. Aaron Green, and you said Ch Chesapeake, Virginia. That's where I live. Chesapeake, Virginia, and they can right. find you there if they wanted to contact you further about sure. uh, talking about NDEs. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Well, uh, I guess we'll have to pay attention and uh, maybe you can let us know when you have a book. Okay, you know, sure. I don't know if you're in our um, Unordinary Made Ordinary Facebook group. Yeah, I, I just joined uh, recently. Yeah. Oh, okay, awesome. Yeah. So yeah, I'll be on there. Yeah, definitely. You know, when when you've got it, um, we definitely have, uh, you know, on Fridays where people post their, okay. their, their stuff that they sell or whatever. Um, well, is there any final message you'd like to share with anybody or message from your heart? Um, to, you know, to me, I, I think my experience and the, and the millions of other experiences make it pretty clear that uh, this stuff about God is real. It, it's not just uh, wishful thinking or anything like that. It's actually real. And that, uh, you know, based on my experience, what's important is how we treat other people. You know, we're supposed to be developing into more loving, compassionate, kind people. And, and, you know, if we just try to, to, to do that, we're making our whole, uh, th this whole path back to God easier, you know, and, 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 you know, it's stuff we know we should be doing anyway, just, just be good to other people and, and we can make our, our whole uh, existence easier. Wouldn't that be wonderful? <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, um, I just wanted to say thank you for joining us today and sharing yeah, your story. You. It's, it's amazing how much information that you actually got. Um, and uh, if anyone would like to uh, see more interviews like this, be sure to subscribe to our channel, hit like, hit the bell icon, comment. We love to hear from you guys. And um, thank you so much. And I hope everyone who watched this is having a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.